Hello, everybody, and welcome to Changemakers, your show for new online business owners looking for inspiration and courage as they begin their entrepreneurial journey. On this show, we have solo episodes where yours truly, Valerie Fisher, will discuss neuro-linguistic programming, sales and marketing, and business tips. Majority of the show will have guests who will share stories of their own journey and whose products and services also hope to serve new online business owners like you, our listeners and viewers. I'm excited for this episode, so let's get the ball rolling. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Changemakers with yours truly, Valerie Fisher. Today, we have Miss Tracy Beavers. Tracy is a multi-passionate entrepreneur, and she has built and established successful businesses, several successful businesses while in a corporate job. I am definitely interested in how she was able to do that. So watch and watch this episode and stay tuned. Hello, guys. As I mentioned, we are going to have Miss Tracy Beavers today as our uh, guest for Change Makers. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you for Thank saying you. yes. Thank you, Valerie. I'm very excited to be here. Yes, I know. Um, so uh, I spoke with Tracy earlier before, before we started, and I know she's going to give us a lot of information. And for all of you sellers who are following me today, real estate entrepreneurs and sellers, um, watch out because <laughs> Tracy has a lot of um, information and um, advice for us, for, for sellers. And for those of you also who are still thinking, uh, who are still in the corporate job and, and um, thinking of, of venturing and finally, you know, diving <laughs> and really doing it and going into entrepreneurship, Tracy will also have a lot of things for us today. Okay, first question. Tracy, um, what change, if you know, what change did you want in this in your life or in this world that inspired you to start and build your business? Business says, <laughs> but you yes. can choose from any. <laughs> yes. So the biggest thing for me was time freedom and being able to create something of my own. I have spent many years in corporate America ever since I graduated from college. And so I have built lots of other businesses for other people. I've made a lot of money for other corporations and other people. Um, and I just reached a point where, you know, serving an eight to five schedule with a one hour lunch and no breaks and, you know, building something for somebody else just didn't resonate with me anymore. And I knew throughout all of the things I've ever done, I knew that helping people was the one commonality in all of the roles I've ever played, that it was my favorite thing. And so I just had to kind of um, ask myself, okay, if the eight to five cubicle isn't what you want, what do you want and what does that look like? And so, as you said, I do have several businesses. I started with a network marketing business um, and then it grew into me realizing through some really good friends that I've always been a coach and I al have always loved helping people. And so I thought, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to do business and sales coaching because the other thing people have always said to me is you're really good in sales. It comes naturally to you. It doesn't bother me. And I, I enjoy it. I love sales. I love networking. I want other people to love it too. And what's so funny is I'll meet people and they're like, I don't love sales. And I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't get it. <laughs> so that's how it started. It was just, you know, wanting more for myself, wanting more for my family, you know, and being able to sort of set my own schedule. You know, building a business is tough. Uh, it takes a lot of work, but I can work it around what I'm doing, which is great. Yeah, I, I, I resonate with building businesses with, uh, for other people. <laughs> That's also kind of what I did. Um, I was in advertising and then marketing. And in both cases, it was for other people. You know, it was um, helping yes. them get more rich. <laughs> yes. 
for sure. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so how, let tell me about your first business. How did you start? Because you mentioned that you started this while you were in corporate. I did. Yeah. So when I was, um, this was, I think, seven years ago now, um, I was working uh, for a corporation here in town in business development. Um, I grew, speaking of making other people rich, I grew their market share 86% the first year I was there. Oh, wow. And we were on track the second year to grow at another 30 to 40%. So I was making them a lot of money. And, you know, what's unfortunate is I probably still would be considering working for them if they hadn't started, you know, messing around with our pay plans and our comp plans and, um, I don't know. It just wasn't a good fit. And so um, some friends of mine were um, building a skincare business. It was a network marketing company. And um, I took a look at it and I, you know, I love skincare. I love taking care of myself. I like helping other people do the same thing. And um, I just, I took a look at it and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try it. And it worked out great. Um, I have, I still have the business. I just don't promote it. Mm. Um, it's not my focus for building, but I have over a hundred clients that I still take care of and they still love the products and all of that. But what I found in building that business was um, I learned a lot about how to build a business. I learned a lot about when to spend money on the business and when not to. Um, I learned a lot about the difference between having a business model like that one and having the business model I have now with coaching, because the, the coaching is is all me, you know. Um, but when you represent another company in a network marketing space, you know, you still at the end of the day are not you're not an employee, but you are subject to what the company decides to do or not do, the direction they decide to go or not go, you know, the changes they decide to make to the comp plan or the structure or whatever. And then you're subject to whether or not people stay on board your team and you're, you know, so um, for me, I needed to get back to a space where I could help other people grow businesses. That was one of the things that it, that attracted me to that company in the first place was that, you know, the thought of helping other, and it was 90% women, the thought of helping other women who are like me wanted something different for their family, grow a business was very exciting. And so I just decided a couple of years ago to just do it on my own and build my coaching practice. Okay. So that was, that was the first. And actually my second question to you, um, you already answered because I was going to ask, did, did anything from the first business help you build the second one? And you said, you know, you, you took the, learnings from from that first business down not next to you know the the second one i'm feeling like um you know with everything that you've been saying really the root of your business model um is helping people yeah. <laughs> it's helping yeah. people is that kind of your your why is that you know um really part of um your personal brand or you know your purpose because yes. you you keep on repeating the, the word help how mm -hmm. does that help you with your personal brand it absolutely is my personal brand um you know my friends my family people that coach with me people that are in my um, facebook group for my business they will hear me say all the time i just want to help a lot of people um that is a driver for me um you know, yes, I want to make an income that supports my family, but I'm not in this to be a millionaire. I mean, you know, if it happened, quite frankly, I wouldn't know what to do with it all. But, um, you know, that's not what drives me is millions of dollars and a big house and, you know, all of those things. What drives me is building something that really makes a mark in the world and really helps other people win. I love to help small business owners win because being a business owner is so hard and nobody talks about that part. They, <laughs> you know, everybody's uh, I'm, I shiny love and snazzy. And uh, sorry, I lost you there. Um, everybody love, uh, you know, not, nobody talks about right. Hard nobody talks about how, 
they don't want to talk about how hard it is. They just want to talk about all the things that are going great. And they want to be Facebook fabulous and, <laughs> you know, giant on Instagram and, you know, all this. And I'm just like, okay, could we just pause for a second and talk about <laughs> what do you do when your phone stops ringing and <laughs> nobody wants to buy what you're selling and you know all that and so if I can come alongside my clients and help them really move that needle toward what they're trying to get to and help them have confidence that everything they're doing every day is going to get them there and I'm there alongside them guiding and advising and all of that that it that's what drives the bus for me that's what keeps me doing what I'm doing so um, really, you're helping entrepreneurs get to wherever they want to go. You saying yes. sales, you saying um, mindset. Um, what, well, yes. what else is in your arsenal? <laughs> yes. So um, every client comes to me with a different uh, foundational need. Um, but you're correct. So we, I work on um, mindset for sure. Um, people want to ignore the mental part. And if we do, that's a huge mistake because as we just talked about, it's really hard some days to be a business owner. Um, so you've got to have your mindset set. You've got to have it sharp. You've got to know what to do on the days when things aren't going quite as well as you expect. And then um, scheduling is something else that we talk about a lot because if they don't have a schedule that's serving them, if they are in reaction mode all day long, then that is exhausting if they're going to burn out and they're not going to achieve anything that I try to coach them on because they don't have time. Mm. And so then we move into the sales aspect of it. What is their sales cycle? What, what things are they doing to bring people from the top of their funnel all the way through to the sale? And then the networking aspect of building a business. Networking is super important, both from an, a paid standpoint um, well, marketing paid is what I mean. Social media advertising, obviously that can be important, but networking, um, simply to build your network of people and how to do that and being effective with it is something that my clients struggle with. They'll go to the networking event and they'll get all the business cards. And then those business cards sit in a stack on their desk and they're not doing anything with them. And so, you know, that's something we talk about. And then um, you know, moving their clients from just the one purchase to a great referral source with them where those clients are so happy that they're sending all their friends and family to them to, for, and everybody else that they know. So those are the things that I, that I teach on the most in my, and I have a six week online course that touches on all of those things as well. What's been the most difficult mindset that you kind of have to help a client with? Has there been like, uh, you know, it, it was challenging for you. Can you, uh, you mean challenging for me to, yeah. I mean, it, it was a mindset that the client had at the time that was kind of challenging for you. Something that he had to deal with. Of course he had to deal with, with, um, with that, but you know, um, that it was, he was coming from somewhere that was difficult to understand. <laughs> yeah. So I think the most challenging, um, well, two things come to mind. One is when someone has a spouse or significant other that does not understand entrepreneurship, oh, that doesn't yes. understand being a small business owner, that doesn't understand that the income is not, you know, solid. It's not always solid and stable. It's going to kind of, you know, ebb and flow. Um, that can, that can be difficult on the client and working through that mindset where, um, you know, how to deal with it with a, with a spouse or significant other that's not supportive and, you know, you know, what to do in that space. And then the other thing that comes to mind is, um, you know, we get so excited about our businesses and what we're doing that we just run headlong with glee and excitement into the business and we're doing all the things and everything's great. And then a few months in, I tell my clients this, I said, you're going to wake up one day and you're going to think, who am I to be doing this? Who am I to be charging money for this? Nobody's going to want to pay me. I'm not qualified. And so that's where we have to back up and say, okay, yes, you are. You have a gift. You have talent. You are here for a reason. You have aligned your purpose with. And we're going to move forward. And people call it imposter syndrome. I'm sure you've heard that because that's a imposter syndrome is a big buzzword right now. And it's basically just 
all of a sudden you lose that belief that you can do this and that you are worthy of it. Yeah. So those are, those are super key things in the mindset area. Number two, I actually experienced number number two because um, when I started the business, I, I actually lost my job last year. And then people started asking me for help. And then I realized, oh, I can monetize this. <laughs> I can do training, yes. I can do coaching. Yes. Because, you know, it right. was it was from a real insight that that there was a need for it and people came to me. So, you know, I never really needed to look for clients. Um, but then around November, December, I was like, why am I doing this? <laughs> why am I charging this much? I'm like, and especially around January, I discovered, so I was like in my little bubble, just like you helping, you know, just, just addressing what they, what, what their needs are, um, answering their questions. Around January, I discovered the very happy um, Facebook groups. <laughs> okay. So Facebook groups, I'm like, oh, there are groups for coaches. There are groups for trainers, etc. And mm -hmm. since I decided I can monetize. I mm -hmm. asked for help. You know, what do I do? What do you think of this, etc. It was me still being naive. And then uh, a guy said, what do you mean brain science selling? That's BS. I have a PhD <laughs> in psychology. My wife is a neuroscientist. Um, oh you know, my God. What? Yeah. And I'm like, so when I got that, I'm like, oh, I'm, maybe I'm not who am right. I to do this? It, right. was, it was hard. Um, yes. I kind of, you know, really pulled back and I had to, I had to kind of defend my mm -hmm. own thoughts to myself. So me and my third self and my fourth self, we kind of had a meeting. <laughs> we kind of had, had a meeting. It was yeah. a team meeting. And then they're like, you know, what am I, what are we going to do with this? Um, but I had to really go deep within myself and, 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 you know, under, understand where they are coming from, where I'm coming from. And then I said, you know, this guy may be a PhD in psychology, but he's not, he doesn't do marketing. You know, he can't doesn't. find the two. So and he's not the person. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's going to find his people and you're going to find your people. There are people out there that need Valerie. Yeah. So, um, but I truly, truly understand the imposter syndrome because that <laughs> happened to me. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Happens to me too. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was having it. I was like, my gosh. And a friend of mine said, you're a confidence coach. What the heck is going on? <laughs> Why have you lost your confidence? And I'm like, I don't know. This doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> so I had to, I had to give myself a little pep talk. I know yeah, a little meeting, a little team meeting. Yeah, team a little meeting. meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then okay. Um, I just, I'm just curious. Um, mm -hmm. you mentioned your, you know, when you did the, when you did the business while you were in corporate America, and then yeah. you also mentioned about scheduling and time management. I'm just curious if there was if there's one advice because you did the business while you were in corporate America and then you also you know teach people about scheduling what was what's your magic how were you able to do that you know that was a lot of trial and error in the beginning and I'll tell you it was not it was not easy so what I had to do was I had to figure it out um, because I was working the eight to five and um, had, you know, the traditional one hour lunch um, and all the stress that comes along with that. Cause I was in a production role. I was in business development. I was in sales and I had to produce for that company. And then I have, I'm a mom. I have two kids. I have a, a husband house, all the things right. That everybody else is doing. And as women, especially we are really spinning all of the plates. It, it's not always we have it done with the family and the, and the house and all that other jazz, but it's the emotional okay. feeling, the baggage One that comes minute. with that. One minute. Yeah. Um, can you repeat okay. uh, what you said after uh, we are spinning all the plates? Because I, I, I kind of lost you after that. Okay. okay. You're a little frozen. Can you hear me? 
uh, one minute. All right, let's see. <laughs> okay, can you we're hear back. me? Okay. Yeah, we're back. Okay. So we okay. Have, you stop on. Um, we're spinning all the plates. Yes. So women, you know, if we're, if we're working a full-time job and we have a husband, kids, all that stuff, we're trying to do all the things and not only trying to do all the things, but we're carrying all the emotional baggage of all the things, all that worry, all that, you know, that's something that we as women carry that men typically don't. And so um, I had to be very strategic about how was I going to build this business? Because one of the things I talked to my husband about was I said, I want to do this. But I, you know, I don't need you to tell me yes, but I, but I do want to know that you support me in it because it, it would just would have been super difficult for me to do something that he didn't support at all. And so I told him, I said, I will do my very best to guard our nights and our weekends and not have it take away from our family. So um, what I had to do was set my business hours. That was the biggest thing mm -hmm. and communicate that to the family. So for example, um, if I had an event for the company, um, you know, sometimes we did um, in-home parties for the products and, or we did a vendor event or we had like a wine and cheese or whatever to introduce people to the business and the products. And I knew what night that was. So let's say that was on a Tuesday night. And then I said, okay, I've got that on a Tuesday night. So I probably don't need to be doing anything on Monday night or Wednesday night, but maybe Thursday night might be another time for me to spend one hour to two hours working the business. And then on Saturday morning and Sunday morning for us, nothing was really happening at our house until at least 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, because both kids were, are older. Now they're much older, but then they were, you know, middle school at junior high, high school age, and they were sleeping, you know, so <laughs> it wasn't like they were getting up at 6 a.m. and needing me. Um, so fortunately, it worked out. But what I had to do was every week, I had to plan it out. And I had to say, okay, what, where, here's my working hours. Here are the things that we're doing for the family. Now, where are my pockets of time where I can work on my business? And so I would schedule it. That is the biggest thing that I would say to anybody. If you're wanting to do something extra, you need to figure out where you can do it and schedule it and keep the appointment with yourself. That's the, that's the other thing. It's like, if I set the business hours for myself, but I didn't do them and I didn't keep them, then there's no point in setting them. That's true. Uh, that's, that's, that's huge. It's, um, again, it applies to me. It's like <laughs> fine. <laughs> It's challenging to to um, kind of set that you know the the scheduling the scheduling part. Okay, this is the most exciting part for our sellers out there. If there is one thing, so we did the one thing for scheduling. If there is one yes. sales advice that you yes. could give to our um, followers, viewers, listeners today, what what would be that? Eighty six percent said right. Eighty six percent growth. 86% growth. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so what I would say is, well, there's several things when it comes to sales, people, people start to feel weird about it. And they think that they need to put on a sales hat and a sales suit and use sales words. And you don't have to do any of those things. Um, what you do need to know is the ins and outs of your product or service. What are you selling? How does it benefit other people? What do your customers, what do they need? What can you give them? And so, for example, um, one of the companies I worked for was a title insurance company. And my job was to talk to real estate agents and have them use our title closing services. And in our area, there are a lot of title closing companies. So I had to figure out what do I offer that sets me apart and what do, the, what do the real estate agents need? And when I asked them that question, nine out of 10 would say communication. I need clear communication, right? Yes. So, okay. so, so what I did was I made sure that we delivered on clear communication and I made sure that my message to them was that we were gonna deliver on clear communication. Okay, so um, that's actually 
taken for granted by a lot of salespeople, I think, communication. Because for them, mm-hmm. it's mostly selling, selling, selling. You know, it's like, yeah. I, I feel like a lot of salespeople that I have met are too salesy. They're not communi- promising the right communication. You know, they're just all about yes, the product or the service. Yes, that's correct. They are, they're coming at the, at the client with a push message rather than coming to the client, listening to what they need and using a pull message, a pull strategy. So we attract people to us when we are offering what they need. That's good. That's the right. Valerie, are you still there? Cause you're frozen. Oh, okay. Can you repeat? Okay. We, we attract the pull and push. You said we, that's yes. cool. so, I can write that down. <laughs> <laughs> so the people that are saying uh, that are all they're doing is talking about their product or service. They're being salesy. They're being annoying. They're being spammy. Um, they are using push messaging where they're just coming at the client, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. You know, this is why we're great, blah, blah, blah. Well, people don't like to be sold, but people do like to buy. Yes. And there's a difference. So by allowing the client to maintain the control over the transaction, you actually end up in a push message. You use a pull message, a pull strategy. So a pull strategy is me coming to Valerie and talking to you and getting to know you as a person and understanding what it is you need. And then when I see that my product or service is a good fit for you, I, t- I tell you that. I tell you why what I have is a good fit for you, what makes it different, how it's going to benefit you. People want to know what's in it for them. That's all they care about. Yes. And if so those real estate agents, they wanted to know that, 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 that the communication was going to be good. They wanted to know that I was going to take good care of their clients and them. And they wanted to know that the experience the client was going to have was going to make the client so happy that they wanted to use them again and tell other people to use them for real estate. So I needed, that was what was in it for them. That's what's important to a real estate agent. That's what they build their business on. Mm-hmm. And so- by saying that to them and communicating exactly that, that is what pulled them towards us. And they recognized that we were different. It wasn't me just saying, well, we're, we have the best fees or I have the best team or my process is smoother. Those things everybody says. They needed to hear how I was going to make their lives better. And that's what we need to focus on when we're in sales. If we focus on being givers and being helpers, And just take the sales word out of it. Yes. Because the best thing, the the key to being in sales and being successful is finding out what the other person needs and giving it to them if you can. This is all golden. I hope everybody, (laughs) you know, I hope that you wrote that down. (laughs) Because it's 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 all, you know, value bombs. Mm -hmm. Tracy's been been giving us about, you know, about how to how to schedule your time how to do sales because it's really not about sales and like what she said you know focus on giving and focus mm-hmm. on serving it's right. um i read right. somewhere and i would say, I, oh, go I, ahead. I read somewhere that um the old this the word sales comes from an old norwegian word called um i think the original word it was sale or to serve which People have forgotten, I think. Oh. <laughs> I yeah. like that. I'm going <laughs> to look that up. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> it's either yeah. sale or seller. So it's, it's, you know, it's around that, that area. And I think people have forgotten that the, really the, the root word, purpose of the word sales is, is to serve. And that's probably to- that's why you feel like it's so icky because we've forgotten that. Well, the other thing is, is that when you're in sales, there's this stress of producing, you know, there's the stress of, am I going to sell? Am I going to make money? And that puts all that internal pressure and stress on us. And that's why we start acting weird. If you just relax 
and be a human being <laughs> and meet other people and ask them what they need, just take the sale out of it. Because here's the thing, if I'm visiting with you and I realize that my product or service is not what you need, that I'm not the best choice, I'm going to tell you that. And I'm going to help you find the better. I will tell you if my competitor is the better fit for you. And here's why, because I have to sleep at night <laughs> and I want, I want what's best for the person in front of me every single time. And so by, by telling you, okay, I don't think mine is the best fit, but here's one that I think might be, you will remember that and you will be far more likely to come back to me or refer me to your friends and family. Yes, yes, I, I, yes, we need sleep, guys. <laughs> we need to sleep. Yes, well, <laughs> we have to be connectors. We have to be helpful and connectors and serving. And, and so not only are we serving by asking the client what they need and potentially making the sale, but we're also serving by making that connection as a networker and a referral source, you know, somebody who's more than just a salesperson. Yes, truly agree. Okay, last question. Um, you know, you've, you've given us so much for today. You've given us a lot so. of information, value bombs, techniques, tips, etc. I'm curious to know what has been the best advice that you have ever been given that you still maybe take until today? Yeah, um, to be myself to be my authentic self, because one of the things I talk about with my clients, we, we discuss the business vision. You know, you've started the business. What do you, where do you want it to go? How big, how big do you want it to be? Do you want a team? Do you want, what does that look like? And then we talk about their goals and I'm like, okay, there's your vision. Now we need to set your goals. Sometimes what happens to us is we start looking around at other people, like for me, for example, in the coaching space, I can be guilty of this. I will look around at other coaches and I'll think, oh, they're doing that. I probably should be doing that. Or, oh man, they just hired a social media manager. Should I be hiring a social media manager? I mean, you know, you just get all distracted by what's your comp competition doing. And what we have to do is at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, okay, that may be a good idea, but is that a good idea for me, mm -hmm. for what I am building, for the direction I want to go? Because some of us want wealth, like money wealth, like large piles of cash, mm -hmm. right? And some of us want time wealth mm -hmm. and time freedom. And then others of us want to mix both. And so if you're Comparing yourself to some, if you want time freedom and time wealth, and you're comparing yourself to someone who wants money wealth, you're not in alignment with what you truly want, and your business is not going to succeed. And so that is something I, I've learned the hard way, because I would, when I first started in business, I was doing what everybody else was doing, because I just didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. But I slowly figured it out, and with my own coach, realized I needed to be more authentic to me, even though what I ended up doing was completely different than everybody else. And I was running the risk of being, you know, having some criticism for it, but I was like, I'm going to stay true to myself. I'm going to build this the only way I know how. And that's, what's made me successful. Yeah. We, we, we needed, I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> It, it really is, you know, especially if you have, like what you said, if, if it's something unique to you, if it's something that only you can produce, that only you can serve, you, you get haters, you know, naysayers, oh, yes. um, like for me, for example, NLP is not a unaccepted, uh, you know, field of science for some people. And so I, I always, you know, I, I, I get that a lot, but I also have people who, you know, believe in NLP and that's the other side of it. And then, you know, maybe that's who I can help. All right, Tracy, where can we find you for everyone listening, watching who needs a confidence and sales coach? Um, where can they, where can they find you? And if you have any promos, any new product services coming up? Yeah. So my website is tracybeavers.com and on Facebook, I'm Tracy uh, Lane Beavers. 
And then you can see my Facebook group is called Be a Confident Entrepreneur, Gain Confidence and Grow Your Income. I would love for people to jump in there. It's a supportive, collaborative group of business owners and entrepreneurs and salespeople who are all learning from each other. So it's really fun. Um, I do have a six week online course. It is on my website. It is the Be a Confident Entrepreneur course. And we go through, it's a do it yourself, uh, self paced course. You get six weeks of content, six videos and workbooks to go with each video to dive deeper. But we cover all things, all the things we've talked about, the mindset, the scheduling, being comfortable in sales, being comfortable setting your pricing and quoting it without hesitating and without apologizing, um, how to network effectively and really build relationships with other people that are going to lead to more business for you. Maybe not right then, but, but you know, further down the road, it will. So I would love for anybody to check that out. And if they just want to connect with me, there's a contact me button on my website and I'd love to, ch to chat with them. Yes, and I will also be sharing your links in the show notes and on the Facebook um, description in the caption, in the, in the copy for, for this episode. So everybody, um, don't worry if you missed that. It will be on our show. It will be on our show notes. Um, thank you, Tracy, for bearing with me <laughs> despite the, the um, internet glitches. Thank you. Thank you for sharing what you know. Um, like, I, like I said, there were some things, some things, things that you mentioned that were kind of, oh, I needed that today. <laughs> I have to be reminded of that today. <laughs> so, Good. so thank you. Um, um, and thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, guys, thank you again for watching Changemakers, and I will see you again soon. Bye.